Hello everyone, this is uh, Kaptan Baha. As you know, since the start of this coronavirus thing, well, let's call it since last March, the airlines have been struggling with the low demand and no income whatsoever. Except, of course, cargo airlines, which their business has been booming quite a bit. But a lot of the passenger airlines, they're struggling in terms of their cash flow, in terms of their payroll expenses and other expenses. Payroll is one of the biggest expenses for an airline, no matter what, what size the airline is. Uh, besides the fuel and maintenance, the payroll becomes the biggest expense of an airline. And um, since you're not flying as an airline, you don't have that much maintenance expenses and you don't have definitely as, uh, as much money that you have to spare for the fuel. However, payroll still stays the same. So a lot of the different airlines went to different measures. Uh, some of them, they got um, government, government bailouts. Some of them, they got actually um, grants from their government, like many airlines in US. Some of them, they got very cheap loans. And some of them, they actually decided to do their own, to, to find their solution on their own. Basically, for instance, uh, raising money from the private markets, like um, Cathay Pacific did it. They sold some 777s and then they're leasing them back from the lesser. Um, Lufthansa is one of the examples. They're actually, you know, raising cash with, with, the, with their own mechanisms and all that stuff in place. One of the airlines that I like to bring in attention to is Turkish Airlines. Why? Because, well, I'm pretty much familiar with uh, the way that they run the, their businesses and so forth. And it's one of the leading airlines in the world. There's no question about that. However, I, I have been told that they're, they're practicing some measures that they are very bad with, uh, with, the, uh, with the crews, either flight crews or cabin crews. For instance, their per diems have been cut to down to zero. Um, their pay has been cut to one third of what they used to make. And uh, their work rules, well, the company just walks all over their work rules. Obviously, in these hard times, people are going to take concessions. There's no question about that. And some of the airlines, they're handling it a lot friendlier for labor than uh, some of the airlines that I will mention, well, namely Turkish Airlines in this case. For instance, despite the fact that they have a collective bargaining agreement, uh, they just, the, the management unilaterally canceled all the provisions in there they uh, decided to uh, reduce their pay, they decided to uh, um, reduce their per diem, well basically down to zero, and they also cut some benefits like um, flight benefits and so forth. But what is really bad is the fact that the government is basically subsidizing the, uh, some of the operation is right now, and they're basically literally paying the salaries of the employees, especially when it comes to the flight and the cabin crews. However, because of the fact that government is involved, everybody is getting paid one-third or one-fourth what they, what they used to make. So because of that, um, there is a huge amount of pay reduction. And when you add the per diem loss, when you add some benefits loss, it's, it's a very big reduction when it comes to their compensation. Um, the government came up with the part-time work scheme in, in Turkey, and then that enables the... Uh, the airline to use the cruise only half of the month. Well, you say, that's not too bad. It's kind of like a part-time work. It is correct. It is part-time work. They only work 15 days in a month. The problem is the crews uh, are used in those half of the uh, half portion of the month for a almost a 70-hour level. So they used to fly 100 hours when they were working full-time, but the crews are being forced to fly to their maximum of their limit, which is 70 hours. So basically you make them almost as hard, but you pay them only one third or one fourth of their pay. Their pay uh, has been reduced down to, to levels of, for instance, uh, US regional uh, first officer levels. Well, they're flying 777s, 350s, 787s and so forth, but the reduction of the pay, it's humongous. Uh, compared to the other airlines in the world. Obviously, management knows the fact that they cannot just basically pack up and go to a different airline because, let's face it, nobody is hiring these days. But at the same time, they're also practicing some not-so-safe uh, operational methods. To give you an idea, uh, a heavy crew, basically four pilots, are working 
24, 26, 27 hour duty days going from Istanbul to somewhere in the Central Asia all the way to Beijing or Shanghai, stay, not overnight there, and then load up the airplane and fly back. Well, flying is fun, flying is good, but at the same time, when you do it for that kind of an extended period of time, it becomes a safety issue. No matter how you slice it and dice it, it becomes a safety issue. Uh, there is complete disregard for it right now. The same thing basically on the long haul operations, especially when it comes to cargo, because of the fact that company is actually making pretty good amount of money on that side of the house. They're pushing their crews uh, almost beyond their limits. So is Turkish Airlines going to suffer a, a loss because of that? Well, you never know. I mean, human factors, safety, all these, uh, all these important aspects of flying seems to be ta have taken a back seat when it comes to uh, making money, pushing the next pallet of cargo to the next destination, and so forth. Because of the fact that crews are flying also on the passenger side, well, they resume their flights, because of the fact that on the, on the passenger side they're flying shorter period of time but a lot more condensed schedule, I'm wondering what their schedule look like, looks like um, when it comes to the passenger operations. And from what I've been hearing, they're getting pushed on those limits as well. So the airline has got a huge amount of reduced amount of flights, but at the same time, they're condensing them on the crew so much that some crews are basically staying home and some crews, they're working their tail off. So needless to say, I think this is a safety issue. I think um, authorities have to watch these. And unfortunately, um, if you bring up this issue in, within the airline, because it's a safety issue, you should not be hesitant about bringing it up. But if you bring it up, um, they, they call you to give a defense on, about the complaint that you filed, about the um, concerns that you voiced. So everybody is just staying put, staying shut up, and they're just doing their job so that they can go home. Well, if it's a safety issue, it's, it's, a, it's a major concern. So just wanted to bring up this interesting subject to your attention because nobody is mentioning it. Definitely not, not, nobody in Turkey is mentioning that because of the fact that there are laws in there that they can actually shut you down if you speak up um, against, uh, against the mighty Turkish Airlines. So be wary of that. Um, be aware of that and hopefully they will get their act together and um, we, will, we will not see any, any loss, any whole losses or any accidents or incidents. Thank you so much for uh, watching my channel. Subscribe to the channel down below. I'll bring up uh, other interesting topics and I'll have more videos from the ACCA event that I attended. I'm just in the process of putting them together. So. I'll see you on the next video. Kaptan Baha, out.